Welcome to Transform Your Workplace. This episode is brought to you by Zenium HR. I'm excited for today's episode. I am doing more of a business focused episode. And I had a conversation with Chris Ronzio, and we're here to talk about a business playbook and how effectively we can scale organizations by documenting and delegating your organization's profile, people, policies, and processes. And we dive into all of that. It's very relevant to even functional departments like a human resources department. So I think you're going to get a lot out of this. Like I said, very business centric, but this topic is so relevant for those that are really trying to get a seat at the table and develop business acumen. Hope you enjoyed this episode with Chris Ronzio, the author of The Business Playbook. Hey, Chris, it is a pleasure to have you on Transform Your Workplace. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Let's do some storytelling, or I'm going to have you do the storytelling. You had, I don't know if you call it a breaking point when you were owning and operating an event video production company early on in your life. I don't know if you're in your late teens, or early 20s. It sounded like it was that point in your life, but you had a pretty successful video company. And at some point, there was a moment where I think you were like, there's something wrong with the way we're operating this business. What, what happened? Yeah. So it was, I was in my early twenties. It was after college. I had moved out to Arizona where I live now and we were doing events all over the country. And so the way the business worked is we would find a crew in the city of the event. We would staff the event. We'd send them all the gear that they needed. They'd film the event and send the gear back to us. And in a perfect world, that's how it would work. So I'm out here in Arizona and it was our first holiday season. I had just gotten married. So brand new wife. And we had all these festivities planned for the holidays. And I get this call on a Friday afternoon that the event we had in Southern California for a Saturday morning, the entire crew had pulled out. They got offered like a couple dollars extra or something like that. The whole crew canceled. And I had no other options. Rather than try to staff this event at, you know, late at night, I get in my car, I cancel on all the holiday plans, and I drive the six hours out to LA uh, with a friend of mine, and I'm waiting on the doorstep of a, a rental company for them to open the first thing the next morning, I'm begging them to please come in an hour early, give me all the equipment I need, also that I can film this like holiday figure skating event <laughs> that I couldn't even believe I'm, I'm standing there, you know, filming five and six year olds fall down on the ice while my wife's at like the holiday party we were supposed to go to. And so I'm thinking, this isn't how business is supposed to work. You know, how many times have business owners or leaders out there had to jump back in and save the day and solve the problems? And if you have processes and backup plans and ways to train people, get them up to speed, you wouldn't have that kind of issue where you feel like you've got to jump in and save the day every time. And so for me, that was the breaking point. That was the time that I said, I can't fly across the country, drive across the country every time there's a problem. How do I fix this? Right. So fitting that Michael Gerber, the author of e -Myth, was the he wrote the forward to your book, The Business Playbook. And it, it was so fitting because Michael Gerber always talked about creating business systems, like getting like out of the day to day working in the business instead you need to work on the business and i felt like with the book that you wrote the business playbook it's like a great part two to michael gerber's book it's the how to how to execute how to remove all the institutional knowledge get it on paper so you can actually scale a business was that kind of the idea behind the book yes yes and thank you for recognizing that so i'm so excited that michael agreed with the pitch that you just made because that's exactly what i said to him is you know i read your book and it was an epiphany for me it was a uh, opening that you can't be the technician and do every job in the business. You've got to work on the company and, and create systems. And so in his book, he says, businesses need a operations manual. They need to think of themselves like a franchise that would have a franchise manual. And so years and years of just trial and error through my video company, finally, I had systems that worked. And, you know, after this, this experience, this ice skating experience, it's just another kind of kink in the chain or whatever of creating the systems in my business. And it wasn't until I had those systems that I felt like empowered to really run the business and to be the the leader, the entrepreneur. And so I made the same pitch to Michael when I finally met him and said, your business says everyone needs one of these. 
I want to show people how to make it after all of my experience. And so thank you for saying that. Yeah. And I feel like the, the, the business playbook, the, the stuff that you're talking about is for a small business, because what I think happens too often, I think you recognize it in the book is that, you know, as you're growing an owner operator and even some tenured employees that you might have, they, they hold all the knowledge. So institutional knowledge is held within a couple of key people. And how do you scale from that? It's, there's nothing documented. How do you bring in and onboard a new employee and share that knowledge without documenting it? So is that the problem that you find with many small businesses, like trying to get to scale, but they just can't quite do it? Yeah, it's it's either the the owner, the entrepreneur, the leader can't delegate and they're not able to translate how they do to someone else and, and replicate how they do, and they just don't want to. Or there's inconsistent results, and you've, you're growing fast, and you've got a lot of different people doing things a lot of different ways, and you just need to all come together and say, what is the company way? How do we do this? And it's not to say that there shouldn't be constant innovation and doing things better, suggesting new best practices. But at different milestones along the way, you have to get aligned and make sure people are doing things all consistently. That's how a business scales. Yeah, what I find interesting is that there's there's moments, and I know you felt like this because you, you described it with your video production company, is sometimes it's just easier to do it yourself rather than train somebody or even spend the time documenting it. But that's such a trap, don't you think? Oh, yeah. It's a total catch-22 because it might be easier to do it yourself this time and maybe next time, and maybe the time after that. But if you add up the hundred times that you're going to step in and do it, it would have been easier to show someone, even if it takes a little bit more time up front. So then you bring up this idea of a business playbook. So why don't you describe what is the business playbook? What are the core components to it? Yeah, so this idea of a playbook was the evolution of what Trainual started with a long time ago, which was standard operating procedures. So initially in my video business and even reading Michael's book, my understanding of an operations manual was that it's really your processes, your standard operating procedures. But in working with so many businesses, thousands of companies around the world, I saw that people want to write down and codify more than just their processes. There's a lot more to it. And so the playbook is really four different elements. There is first a profile of your company. The profile is kind of who you are and what your story is and what your culture is and what your mission and vision as a company is. And it's just kind of like generally, what is your business all about? That's what you teach people a lot of times when you're onboarding them or even in your marketing or public materials before someone works for you. So every business has this profile and that's the first part of the playbook. The next piece is all about about your people. So even if two businesses were generally in the same industry with the same products and services, their people are what make them really unique. And when you dig into the people of a business, you've got a reporting structure and an org chart and locations and departments and teams, roles and responsibilities and backgrounds and bios and contact info. All of that knowledge is part of what you mentioned, the institutional knowledge of a business. Who does what? is crucial for companies to start to write down. So you've got this whole people section that you should put in your playbook. The next one is policies. So this is pretty much your employee handbook, but there's legal policies. There's things that are okay and not okay to do in your business based on your norms and the benefits that you offer. So write down all your policies. And then finally is your processes, is the how you do things, the standard operating procedures. And so when you combine all those things, the profile, people, policies, processes, that's what makes up a, a real complete playbook. And that's what the, the book is about. And you listed those in a very specific order. I would imagine when, when a business is trying to get to scale, they immediately want to jump to the standard operating procedures. But that's your fourth step. Why do you have it ordered the way you do? Yeah, so it's an intentional order because if you imagine getting involved in any new business, this is kind of the order that you would learn things. You'd learn about the business first to even take an opportunity. You'd learn about the people you're working with next, just even sitting with them and getting to know them face to face. You learn the policies of what should and shouldn't I do, what's okay to do here. You might sign a handbook and then you learn the job. You learn the processes of how to do things. And so it's oriented in this way because one, it's the experience of someone learning about your business. It's how it naturally works. And then two, it's just a, you don't want to inundate someone with just skipping to the process before you've figured out that they're a good fit in all these other areas. So this is also the order you should start to write things down because 
it's the order that applies to the most people. Everybody in the company needs to know what the company is all about. And then you need to know what team you work with. And then we all need to know the policies. As you get down to processes, they're more granular. Different people do different things and different processes go with different things. So I recommend people follow this at least as they're getting started because it helps you really start to build it out. Yeah. Can you expand on the profile section of the playbook a little bit? Is it, is this, am I thinking about it the right way? And it's like values and maybe mission and just who we are as a company, maybe the backstory, the history, or is it even way more than that? Yeah, it, it starts there. I like to talk about this kind of like a, imagine a band that gets sick of playing their greatest hits. I'm sure you've heard that, right? When someone starts a business and you're an entrepreneur, you're telling everybody the like the pitch deck and the story and how this business works and who we what we do and what we sell. And then it gets more and more and more diluted the further you get away as a as an owner from doing that onboarding and so what the profile is about is capturing this whole story consistently so that you're giving everyone that comes in the complete information it's not just based on who's working that day giving the person the tour of the office it's a complete thing so i can go deep if you want me to break down all the areas of a profile i mean if you want to name a few that'd be great it does seem to me that it this section is about aligning everybody and like getting everybody on the same page initially yeah yeah the overarching thing would be like culture and alignment it's what it's what makes this business special so you know first your founding story is a big piece of this like why does this business even exist let people into that history the vision and mission, you mentioned this. That's like, where are we going? What's our purpose? Why do we show up and, and do what we do? Your core values is a crucial component of this uh, because before you document anything else in a business, all of the how-tos, you should start with the core values, the the why or the how we should act because that almost takes the place. It's like a filter for when you don't have things documented. People can fall back on your values and, and just make their best decision that that fits within your values. And then you can talk about, you know, your brand, your market, your industry, who your ideal customer is, the menu of products and services that you sell. The profile is really about introducing someone to your complete overview of your business. I love that. So the the people component to the the playbook seems to be like the most fluid part of this playbook. I mean, I assume that you don't write this playbook and then it's just like done it's like on sitting on a shelf somewhere or even digitally like you're probably updating it but it seems like the people part because people come and go and their roles change and stuff like that that you probably have an update this part so maybe talk about some of the components to the people section and how you might go about making sure that it's so accurate all the time yeah so the the part that changes all the time is obviously people come and go and that's a change but also roles and responsibilities are ever evolving you know in a growing business it's sort of like cells dividing where you start at just a couple people doing everything and then you bring on a few more people and then a few more people and and each time you do that you're either creating new responsibilities that didn't exist before or you're delegating existing responsibilities to some of those new people and who does what just the, the real simple idea of division of responsibilities, roles and responsibilities is a precursor to any type of how, any type of documentation. Because if people don't know what's expected of them to be successful in their role, what they're responsible for in the business, then they're lost. You can you make sure everyone's doing things correctly and consistently and, and deal with the processes after you know exactly what's being expected of you. So that kind of shuffling of roles and responsibilities is always changing. And so the people section of the playbook is, it's about clarifying those. And then it's also about just the, the general structure of your company, your teams, departments, locations, roles, and how to get in touch with people if you need to. Yeah, I can think of all the areas, even in my company, where we have stuff scattered around. It's like we've got this org chart for our HR department. We've got an org chart for the payroll department we've got an org chart for this other department then we have team bios on our website but it's not all in one place it's <laughs> it's scattered so i can imagine there's so much value in just having like like if you're new to a company here's a crash course here's what everybody does the roles and responsibilities here's how you can reach out to them all that and just think you mentioned that institutional knowledge one of the most frequent questions in a company is who do i go to for x you know and so being able to surface that really quickly is is a huge time saver. So I got to the policy section of the business playbook and I couldn't help but to think 
you know, don't most organizations have handbooks for, for stuff like this, you know, for all the red tape, as I think, as you said in the book, why put it in the business playbook? So the reason it's in the playbook is, you know, you, you may deal with some of this in a very standard handbook, but what isn't always touched on in a handbook is the unwritten rules, you know, the norms that exist in the business, the things that are okay, not okay. You know, so depending on how complex someone's handbook is, you may just put your handbook as a chapter in the playbook. It may just go fit right in nicely. But what I'm encouraging people to do in my book is to think about all those areas of the business that you didn't tell someone this rule up front, but when they were breaking it, you realized it's a rule at your company. And that's what creating the expectations for people is all about. So the policy is it's not, it's not to create a lot of bureaucracy and red tape. It's just to set clear expectations. <laughs> that's the perfect way to explain it. I appreciate that. So I, I saved the process part for last. Obviously, it's, it's the fourth in the playbook, but it's also, I think, the hardest to grasp because what goes through my head is like, what do you even start to document? Like, what do you determine is the most important? And maybe you've thought through that and have an explanation of like, where do we start? Do you know the answer to that one? <laughs> <laughs> of course. So where you start is going to be different for every company, but I'll, I'll just give you generally where I would start. So first you want to think about what is done most often in the business. So I'll give you an example. When I was running my video production company, we shipped tens of thousands of DVDs around the world every month. And we had people that we hired to package up those DVDs and to put the labels on, to print them off, to put the covers and the packaging and the, the cases. And if we did that wrong, imagine the headache that that would create to try to get back a thousand DVDs in the mail and the, the customer service around that. So that is something that creates a lot of risk for the business because messing it up creates a big problem. So I would think about the things that are done most frequently in the business. And that's an easy place to start. Uh, the next thing process wise you might document is something that is a shared responsibility that a lot of people do. So easy example here is in a retail store, Maybe everyone needs to know how to use the cash register and process gift cards and process returns. It's something that it's a shared responsibility. And if you don't get everybody trained on that thing, that's where it leads to a lot of questions between people, a lot of time wasted. And then the last thing you might think about is what do we need to delegate most quickly? Is there an upcoming role that we're hiring for that we need to take off someone's plate? Let's start to document that thing because we've got an upcoming training need. So beyond those process things, it's easy to start documenting your story, your playbook, your, your profile, following that order. But when you get to process, it's really you're, you're thinking about the urgency and the, the problems to solve in the business. One of the things that came up for me, and I, you did touch on this in the book a little bit, uh, and maybe you can expand on this, is just how you organize it in general. In, in the book specifically, you said it must be searchable. Like I can imagine like having oh, I have a physical copy of a playbook and at this probably not going to work because how do you look up a process really quick if I'm like not sure how to follow a certain procedure versus if you had some sort of organization system or a search uh, or tags or whatever you might do to organize some of these processes like how do you what, what's the procedure for that yeah so I, I tried to be kind of tool software agnostic in the book. And of course, you know, I run and train you all a company for this, but the intent in the book was to say, how does the playbook work in real life? And so search is a great example that you need people to be able to access it wherever they are, and they need to be able to find what they need on demand. If you've got just a hundred page paper manual that you're dragging around in, in the truck, uh, it's a lot harder to find something when you're talking to a customer and, and need to look something up, <laughs> you know? So there's certain just parameters of a playbook that I touched on at the essential qualities of a playbook and search is one of those things. So I definitely recommend it be electronic. It's something that people need to be able to update frequently, like you mentioned, that they can access on any device from anywhere. And it's got to be something that you can actually assign to people the things that they need to know. That's part of the problem with paper, with even documents, is when you send someone something to read and you don't close that loop, you don't provide any accountability that they actually know that thing, then you're kind of crossing your fingers. And so uh, a, when you're rolling out a playbook, you really want to try to assign it, close the loop, make sure everyone understands it. 
I'm going to go really granular here with the structure of it. How do you even document a process? Something that comes to my mind is like, okay, if I'm the owner operator and somebody who intimately been involved with creating the process and I live it and breathe it and I'm trying to now document it and scale it, I might think about it a lot differently than somebody coming to it with fresh eyes. So is there a way in which you might look at documenting a process that's like, at the most basic core steps or I don't know, maybe talk through that because I'm sure you, you've you gone through this before. One easy hack is to have someone interview you about it that doesn't do it themselves because then it's it's sort of the reverse way of doing it where somebody that is that doesn't know this process is going to just ask you all the questions until it's totally clear to them. And it's a great way to document because when you know something so well, you take it for granted. You skip steps, you forget to incorporate things. And so it's, it's a little hack to have someone interview you. But I would say more broadly, documenting something can be as easy as just starting your camera up and fumbling through it and talking through it. The idea, like we're doing here, just recording something is better than not doing it at all. You can always improve the documentation. You can always answer questions and make it better. Uh, in fact, we had a board meeting yesterday. I presented a, a process to the board. They had some suggestions, so I fired out the update through Trainual today, and they, they all kind of laughed that I put it right into our software. And so just doing it, is better than not doing it. And it doesn't really matter how you record it. No, I love that. I'm a huge fan of, and I don't know there's tons of tools like this, but Loom uh, video recording, like right within the browser. So a lot of times if I'm trying to explain a process to somebody and it's visual, I'll just get on, record my voice, record the screen and then fire off that video. And then it's, you know, it's out there forever and they can always reference it. So I imagine within Trainual, you probably have something native to it and are always doing video or document a process, but we have a, a native integration with Loom actually, you know, Trainual is, like I said, it's, it's not how you document it. It's trying to centralize it all. So you can put stuff in Trainual from 700 plus places. That's what I've always felt. And that's why I, I've, I've got to go check out your tool. Worried about it is just a central location for worried about it is just a central location for like a knowledge base, essentially, like where's all your stuff at how do you like search for it and most people don't have that figured out because a lot of times i'm sending one-off videos and processes to people and it's like okay where is it now like i <laughs> right right that's amazing so what organizations are ready for a business playbook like this i imagine a brand new startup's probably not ready because they haven't really figured out everything but who's ready for this yeah, I would say, you, you know, you've never figured out everything, but, you know, I, I go through in the book this framework that is do it, document it, delegate it. It's in a business, in, in every business, in every role, in every task in a business, you figure out how to do it by experimenting. And if you try to write down the instructions the first time you're doing something, chances are you're going to be rewriting them a lot. But if you do something until it's consistent and you realize, yes, I'm doing this the same way every time, if I want to delegate it to someone, that's when you write it down. That's when you write down the instructions. And so do it, document it, and then delegate it. That's kind of the basic framework. In terms of the business size, it can vary, but usually we see people working on this when they've got three, four, or five yeah. people. When you've got kind of a semblance of departments, because after that, that's when you start to subdivide responsibilities where it used to be one person doing everything. And now you've got a few people doing different things and, and we want some consistency. Does the business playbook leave room for process improvement? So meaning like, and we can use your packaging of DVDs as an example. So let's say you, you were doing that forever and then you're training somebody, you have a documented process, but somebody who now you delegated this to finds a better process for it. Yes. You. Can they update it? Yes. That's the best part of this. There should always be a better way. You know, businesses are built to innovate and to continue getting better. And when you've got a playbook, it's not just that you're assigning it to somebody and it's a, this top down thing. It's more like you're empowering them. You're saying as one of your responsibilities in the company, you own this thing now. This is the way we've done it. This is our best practice, but whenever you have a best practice, put it in there, suggest it, improve it. So the DVD example, you know, at some point we started switching like the assembly line of how we put the discs together and we started stacking the cases in a different way. And we got a machine that prints out shipping labels instead of writing them with a Sharpie, you know, like there's, there's always process improvements, but you know, whoever's owning that part of the business, that's how you give them the the autonomy, empower them to improve things. So that said, just 
you were talking about ownership based on the process is does the entire playbook is it owned by somebody or is it owned by several people like basically how does it live and breathe and how do you update it and make sure people are using it that that kind of thing yeah so that all comes down to just permissions of how you share it out but in a perfect scenario i think the playbook is very much like a collaborative piece of living documents information and as long as people can access it and create more information and edit and suggest changes you know they may not be editing your company story like that may be locked down to the permissions of the owners of the company or something but anything that's within their role within the the scope of their job they should always be editing and improving and then you can also tell when things are are updated or when they need to be updated with reminders and and uh, making sure that you know this thing is an accurate reflection of how the business works today not some legacy project from years ago what cautions would you share with people as they're maybe developing their playbook, rolling it out, developing it, redeveloping it? Like there's got to be some roadblocks along the way. Yeah, I would say don't try to wait until it's done and perfect before you roll it out because you'll lose steam. <laughs> you know, trying to write down everything inside your entire company is a huge task. So really start small. I always recommend starting with your profile, your orientation, your people, your roles, responsibilities, it's the core. That's that's making sure that everybody knows what they're responsible for in the business. And then slowly you start to collect processes. Like the processes in your business already exist. You're not sitting down and having to create them from scratch. It's just little by little as you're delegating things or, or wanting people to be consistent, you start to collect those. And if you've got a central place to do it, then your playbook just grows over time. Could you see this working in a department, like for example, human resources, like we get a lot of HR listeners. So let's think about them. Could this work just in one department? Let's say they can't influence the entire organization to move to a, a, an entire business playbook, but could you develop one just for a particular department? Yeah, sure. So the, the scope of what you put into the playbook is really up to you. So we get departments that sign up. HR teams are one of our biggest buyers because a lot of times they're uh, managing the first experience of new hires at a company. When you want to just teach people about the general things they need to know in the business, the structure of your business, that's something that HR typically has ownership over. And then when it gets into the deeper, you know, the how to is maybe it's not rolled out in every department. Ideally, the whole company is using something like this. But uh, we also see, you know, sales teams that will sign up and be really focused on building out all their sales processes and objections and how they operate their culture. So it, it can start in any department and then hopefully it grows throughout the business. Chris, this has been such a fun discussion. Did I miss anything that you'd want to share with listeners before we part? No, I think, uh, I think the last piece is just, just again, mentioning again, the, the empowerment that it's really about creating a great experience for your people, giving them clear expectations and then letting them take ownership on improving their area of the business business. And if everyone across the company is doing that and it's assembled in one place, then you're going to be ahead of uh, ahead of the game for most businesses. Well, I think is a lot of businesses are struggling to keep their people in their company or engaged in general. I mean, this is a great way to do that because you get everybody aligned, engaged in the process, even help improving the processes along the way. So I, I love this idea. Yeah. And it helps show them what the next step in their career is, if they can understand the roles available in your business. Well said. Uh, Chris, it's been a pleasure. Your book is called The Business Playbook, How to Document and Delegate What You Do So Your Company Can Grow Beyond You. Your book's on Amazon. Where else is it at? And where can people find you? Anywhere you can buy books online, pretty much. Barnes & Noble, Target, all those places. Uh, you can go to thebusinessplaybook.com as well to learn more about the book. And you can find me on social media at Chris Ronzio. I hang out mostly on LinkedIn and Instagram. Uh, or you can check out chrisronzio.com. And you got a couple podcasts too, don't you? I do. The fastest growing companies is interviewing leaders of companies that are scaling their revenue really quickly, but then pulling the curtain back on their operations, how their roles have changed, how their delegation has worked, that sort of thing. And then the other one's called Organized Chaos. And that's kind of my uh, daily musings and consulting tips, you know, from back when I used to do consulting. That's awesome. Chris Ronzio, thanks for coming on the podcast. It's been such a fun time. Thank you again.